Oh. Hello, Dr. Pfeiffer. Hi. How are you? Hi, Beth. How are you? Good. Um, so this is sort of a new platform for Brave to be working on, but since the co coronavirus came on us suddenly, um, as you all know, Brave is for breast restoration advocacy and education. But in the last few weeks, we've been pivoting and talking to surgeons, talking about how to stay safe with the COVID, uh, if you're immune compromised, or really just anyone at this point. Joining us today is Dr. Tracy Pfeiffer. She's a, a physician, plastic surgeon, board certified, lives in New York City, the hot spot of it all. Uh, her and her husband actually is a cardiologist. They're very involved in what's going on in New York. Beth Bentley is uh, with Brave. She's a strategic advisor. And uh, there's been a lot of confusion about masks. So we thought today we'd focus on uh, talking about masks and the different types of masks. Dr. Pfeiffer, Beth? Uh, sure. Dr. Pfeiffer, we're just, you might want to start by talking about the background on how the directive on the masks has been a little confusing and, and why it was. Yeah. So there's been a lot of confusion about masks because in the very beginning, they basically were telling people not to wear masks. And I think that that probably was happening because, as we all know, there were not enough masks for the healthcare workers. And it's very important for the healthcare workers to have the masks because they're exposed to the patients. And so they're in a much higher chance of contracting the coronavirus. And it's very important that they have proper PPE. Now we know that the CDC and different states have some different guidelines, but basically they're suggesting that in addition to keeping six feet apart, which we'll talk about why that's really important in a minute, that we also wear a mask. And for all the young people out there, and for everyone really, it's important to understand that you could have the virus and you could be a shedder, which basically means you're a spreader, and have absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. And we're going to put a link on the uh, Brave website that will show you a YouTube video that they made in Japan using very sophisticated technology to show how even when you're talking, just like I'm talking now, virus, if I had it, would be coming out of my mouth, even if I'm not yelling or shouting or singing, just speaking in a normal tone, virus would be coming out and going at least six feet. So when you're wearing a mask, you are preventing that virus from coming out. Now, obviously, if you cough or you're singing, the virus can even spread further, a greater distance. And some of the studies are also showing that the virus can stay like in a little cloud kind of around you, even for a couple hours which is why even though you may not be that close to somebody when you're walking around, it's probably not a bad idea to keep your mask on when you're outside. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, so can you talk a little bit about the different types of masks? And yeah, I mean, you've talk. talked about N95. Yeah, let's uh, talk about the mask. And you know, the masks are doing a couple of things. So if you happen to have the virus and you're sick, obviously you're going to stay home uh, because you're very contagious the first few days of being unwell. But as I said, you could have the virus, have no symptoms at all, and you could spread it to other people. And while you might not get sick, the person who contracts the virus from you could get very sick, especially as we know, older people or people who have other medical problems like high blood pressure or they're overweight, they're immunocompromised because they're on chemotherapy or they had a transplant. There are lots of people whose immune systems don't function as well as a young person's. Obviously, the good news is that the children who have very good immune systems are not getting sick because their immune system is just knocking it out right away. But starting at about age 60, our immune systems don't work as well as they used to. And everybody who's aging like I am, you know, your skin's a little loose, things aren't quite as good as they used to be. Same thing with your immune system. Your immune, you all can, it's like you're a very healthy person, <laughs> but your immune system is not the way it used to be when you were 12. So yes, we're all aging, every one of us. <laughs> so when you're wearing a mask, if you have the virus, 
you are preventing the spread to other people. Now, everybody's kind of a little concerned about what is the right mask to wear. We know that the N95 mask filters the greatest number of particles out of the readily available masks. And then there are surgical masks and there are cloth masks. So this is a typical cloth mask. Somebody just made this. And I just want to point out that there's a fantastic resource. There's a um, clothing company in Los Angeles and their website is suayla.com. Okay, and we'll put that on the Facebook page afterwards too so people can get that. Perfect. And because they couldn't do their regular, um, you know, retail um, production of clothing, they decided to experiment with different face mask patterns and also to test the filtration ability of different fabrics that they had in their studio, but then they also bought some other supplies. And on their website, they have the patterns, all the materials that you would need to make a mask, as well as which materials filter the best. They actually bought a machine from a company and they were able to um, test it. So the size of the virus is approximately 0.1 to 0.03 microns. It probably varies. And a micron is 0.0004 of an inch. So they're very, very tiny. So anything that we want to filter the virus, the fabric obviously has to be pretty tight because the particle size of the virus is so small. So none of us should think that any of these masks are 100% protective. They are helping. They are helping prevent the spread of the virus around. But you still have to do the most important thing, which is after you've been out and about, wash your hands. It's so simple. You don't need a special hand sanitizer. All you need to do is go to the sink, put some soap, and wash your hands under the faucet for 20 seconds. And we've all learned, you know, sing the happy birthday song twice or whatever song you want to sing to yourself. But 20 seconds is the contact time that you need. So if you don't have special hand sanitizers, it's okay. Regular soap and water works beautifully. So you could make a, a mask according to one of the patterns. And then sometimes they make them where you could put in a little filter. Now, you don't have to be panicked if you don't have a filter because most of us are going to be six feet from people anyway. But let's say you want a little extra protection. You could get a HEPA filter vacuum bag and cut a piece and slip it into your mask pocket. Now, the cloth mask can be washed in the washing machine but the HEPA filter can't be sterilized. It requires special um, sterilization with like UV radiation that nobody really has. So, but if you have a whole bunch of these, you could use it if you wanted to. Now, so that's one option, which I think is really good for most people. And if you go on the website, you will see that there are certain shop towels or these like blue shop towels. They use two layers of them and it filtered 87% of the particle sizes of the virus. Now the next step up, so to speak, would be a surgical mask. This is something that as a surgeon, of course, I wear every day and to me it's like putting on my underwear. If you have um, a surgical mask, and again, we're asking you not to go out and buy these because the healthcare people still need this equipment. But if you already have it, you will notice that there is a band inside which is metal. So this is the top, the bottom doesn't have the band. So the part with the band, the metal, goes over your nose because then you can crimp it. So you basically take it, put it on your nose, and push your fingers in so that you're crimping it, and then take the top one, see what's crooked. Take the top one and tie it in a bow. Don't use a knot, tie it in a bow so that you can reuse the mask, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. And then see, now it's stuck on my nose here and I'm kind of tugging it down. And then I'm wrapping it around my chin and then I'm tying this bow below the other bow. Okay, so you don't look gorgeous, but it works. Oh, you look gorgeous. Okay, so you have that on. Now, if you feel like it's uncomfortable, just push it down a little bit and crimp it in around your nose. Now, what you don't want to do is think, oh, I have my mask on, so I don't have, I don't have to worry about anything else. So I see people outside. 
they have their hands and they're touching it and they're moving it around and they're doing this. Try not to do that. Put it on in your house, crimp it, go out, do your thing. Now you come home. Okay, what are you gonna do? Wash your hands first. This is what I do. Wash your hands. Then just untie it. Okay, I'm not touching the front of the mask, right? Because the front of the mask could have something on it. I'm untying it. I kind of hold it like this over on the side. And then I take a paper bag. It doesn't have any handles on it. And I would have had it opened already. And I just dump it into the bag. But I wouldn't have touched it. I just would have dumped it in. Okay, so now I've got the mask in the bag. And I usually wash my hands again because I had to touch the mask. And then I preheat my oven, which is a gas oven. I turn it on first. I put it on the lowest setting, which for my oven is 200 degrees. You need 170 degrees to kill the virus. So I put this mask in the bag, in the oven after it's lit, 200 degrees, because that's my lowest temperature, for 30 minutes. And now this mask is sterilized, and I can use it again. So instead of everybody running around and trying to get like 50 masks and 20 masks and using masks all over the place, you can take one mask and reuse it many, many times. Now, some of the masks, especially those that are made for dental offices, and this is one of them, but you can't tell, it looks the same. But dental offices, they have to have um, basically waterproof, 100% waterproof masks. So if you put this in, there's like a plastic coating on it and it'll melt and you're not going to be able to reuse it. Um, and then... Dr. Pfeiffer, just real quick, um, if they don't have a gas oven, is it okay with an electric oven? Oh, sure. It's just that with the gas oven, you have to preheat it. Like you don't want the flame to spark and go on when you've got the paper in it, even though, you know, the flame is in the broiler and you're going to put it in the oven part, right. but just to be super safe. Okay. And then there are the famous N95 masks. Now, what's different about the N95 masks? And we've all seen pictures of the healthcare workers coming out with the dents and everything on their noses and their skin looks blistered. And, and this is an example of an N95 mask. What they do is these are super tight. So there's no space around it. So there's no gapping on the side. So if a healthcare worker is around a patient, this mask is completely sealed here and there's actually quite a bit of pressure on it and they come in different sizes so people get fitted for these so they fit them correctly and so there's no gaps for the virus to get in and that's why you see people coming out and they've got like indentations and blisters all around their face from wearing these masks and then there is just another style of it which we call the duck bill which i'll show you is this kind. This kind's more comfortable. But this one is also sealed all the way around for our healthcare workers. And the reason why they have to wear these masks is because they're around patients who have COVID all day. So you go to work for 12 hours and you're working with COVID patients, there's COVID virus in the air. So they have to wear these 100% of the time when they're at work. And um, Beth actually sent me an interesting link where there's like a, it's like a cushion that they can wear over their nose to prevent the skin breakdown underneath the mask. But those are the different kinds of masks. And um, it's important for you to wear one when you're outside so that if you are a carrier and you don't know it, or if you do know it, that you're not spreading it to anybody else. And it also protects you to some degree from people around you who may have it. But the most important thing to protect yourself is stay at least six feet away from people that you don't know and um, wash your hands when you when you come back in your house and you're doing things with your family. Hey, Beth and Dr. Pfeiffer, I got a question from Sherry in New York City. She asked two questions. First, about using essential oil called thieves oil. Second, can homemade face shields be more effective in protecting us than a mask? Hmm. It you really mean like depends on the filtration capacity of the material. So it has to be something that, you know, somebody has studied. So if she has good information that somebody tested it to see what particle size it could filter, it could be effective. But it also has to fit properly. So a lot of people, like the cloth masks, a lot of times, they don't have any metal in them. 
So it's not really totally tight around your nose and the sides of your face. Um, the Sui LA site does tell you how to use certain types of ties and stuff to make it a little more fitted around your nose. It's also, and the essential oil I'm not familiar with, so I can't answer that question. We can certainly research it and, and post the answer. I'm happy to do that. And the other thing to remember is that a lot of times when you hear the news reports, they're talking about, you know, touching your face. Okay. The virus is not going to go in through your skin, right? It goes in through the openings in your face. So it can go in through your mouth, your nose, and your eyes. So the healthcare workers, for example, are wearing very tight fitting goggles so that nothing can get into their eyes. So it's very important that when you're outside, you don't just think about your nose and your mouth, but you shouldn't be also scratching your eye and touching your eye and rubbing your eye and doing things like that. Just stay away from your face with your hands and then you'll be safe. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Dr. Pfeiffer. Just a question. So just, just some basic things like when we're walking around, um, like I walk through my neighborhood a lot and, and I'm in Texas, so we got a lot of space, but should I be wearing a mask when I'm walking around or when I'm riding a bike? I would just to be super safe because we do know that these little kind of clouds of viruses can stay in the air and we don't know who was in that airspace right before you were. We don't know exactly how long the virus can last. So to be super safe, I would do that. Um, I don't think it hurts, but I also don't want people to be, you know, paranoid about going outside. I think if you have your mask on, you're going to be fine. Um, the other thing to remember is that there is something, the concept of viral load. So if you're next, right next to a person who has the virus and they cough and you don't have on any protection, you are going to inhale and be exposed to a lot of virus. And your immune system has to fight the virus. So it's a lot easier for your immune system to fight a little dose of virus than a big dose of virus. So if you happen to be outside and you go through a little area of space where somebody just was and there's some virus in the air, chances are it's a very small amount of virus and your immune system is going to be able to handle it, especially if you're wearing a mask because the amount you're going to be exposed to is even less. So I just think it makes sense to be as cautious as possible without being afraid. You're just trying to be informed and educated so you're making good choices, but not so that you're terrified to do anything because it's really important to remember that most people who get this virus are going to be fine, but there are a few people who get sick and when they get sick, some of them get really sick. So we're trying to avoid exposing those people to the virus, which helps the person and it also helps the hospitals because the hospitals have a certain capacity. And so if a lot of sick people are going to the hospital, and once somebody goes to the hospital for COVID, they're usually in the hospital for several weeks. So if all these people are in the hospital taking up resources, which of course they need, they deserve, and they're going to have, then there's not much room in the healthcare system for other people who are also sick, who have problems like stroke and heart disease, and they need a hip replacement. So what we're trying to do, and every American citizen is really doing a great job at this, by doing the social distancing and wearing your mask and preventing the spread, you are thereby preventing a large number of people who normally would have gotten sick from getting sick. And then out of that number of people, even fewer people are going to be in the hospitals needing health care. So every was single wonderful. person who's following these guidelines is making a huge impact. And we're seeing it already in New York City. We're seeing that the number of cases coming into the hospital, it's still increasing a little bit, but it's not doubling every three days the way it was. So we are starting to flatten the curve. Patients are starting to be discharged. but. As everybody keeps saying, we can't take our foot off the gas pedal. We still have to do the social distancing because it's the social distancing that's making the difference. Dr. Then, oh, I'm sorry, Beth, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I also see when I'm walking, I see people are putting their, they are in their cars and they're putting their masks and things in the dashboard and leaving that. Are they infecting others? Are they infecting their car? <laughs> you know, what, what's <laughs> <laughs> if you know it's hard to know because we don't know where they were right if they let's say you were in the grocery store you had your mask on 
you didn't have on any gloves and you're touching the food and you're doing this and you're doing that you put your hand on the on the uh, cart you know you touch the touch screen when you checked out with your credit card and then you went into the car fiddled around with your mask a little bit touching your mask and then you took it off sure could there be virus on your car yeah you know definitely so what i do is when i go out i have my mask on and then I, I I usually wear gloves. And by the way, you don't have to have surgical gloves or boxes of gloves. Just get a pair of garden gloves, which a lot of people have, and you can throw them in the washing machine. <laughs> so you wear your little garden gloves. You do your thing. I keep my mask on in the in. I don't I don't really drive around that much, but I keep it on in the car. Then I get to my apartment. And I take off my gloves and I take off my mask and I dump it in the brown bag. And then I sterilize it and I wash my hands and, you know, we've been fine for weeks. So I just think that the more you control where your mask is, the better, the better off you are. Like, and, you know, did you for sure take it off without touching it? And then you just like put it down on the dashboard? You know, I don't know. I think that's kind of hard to do. Sure. So I wouldn't do it that way, but it's probably not a bad, bad way to do it. It's just not the way I would do it. Sure. Great. Well, thanks so much. Um, I think we're out of time now, but uh, if we get more questions, we'll post them on Facebook. We'll, and, well, I'll have you answer, and then we'll post them on Facebook. And, awesome. Um, thanks for all you're yeah. doing to bring this important information. Thank you to find your If there's more topics out there that people want to know about, feel free, and we'll just keep this going. And uh, really appreciate it. Dr. Fiverr, really stay safe, you and your husband in New York. And uh, we wish you the best, and we'll be in awesome. touch with you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. We'll get through thanks. it. Bye. Bye-bye.